Hello everyone, welcome to my tech talk. My name is Ijiro Genero Daffy. I'll be taking you today on the topic demystifying Kubernetes effortless management with Lens. So I'm a cloud DevOps engineer with half a decade of experience architecting, automating, and opti optimizing deployment over cloud infrastructure. I currently work in the fintech industry and I collaborate with the security and operations team to ensure seamless distribution of our applications to our users. So today we're going to be talking about Lens and how it has helped me be productive at my job. And before we do that, we're going to be having a brief overview of Kubernetes. We're going to be talking about some of the challenges in managing Kubernetes. Then of course, the main thing of the day, an introduction to Lens IDE and how it has helped me in my day-to-day -day job then we're going to have a short demo, then we'll move on to question and answers. So the learning outcome I have for this tech talk today is that at the end of the day, I expect everyone who has joined us to be able to learn to use Lens to visualize their Kubernetes clusters, use it to manage their deployment with ease and to streamline and debug, streamline debug and troubleshoot their applications, which in turn, to boost their productivity. Um, we're going to be talking next about a brief overview of Kubernetes. So Kubernetes, as we know, it's also known as K8S and is an open source container orchestration platform that automates the deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. It was designed by Google and is now currently maintained by the Cloud Native, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So why Kubernetes? Prior to Kubernetes, managing multiple containers. Prior to Kubernetes, managing multiple containers across a cluster of machines was a complex task. Kubernetes provided a unified way for us to deploy, to manage, and to scale multiple applications in one environment, ensuring that it's highly available the resources are efficiently allocated and the networking is simplified, right? And some of the challenges that we came across in managing Kubernetes. So I came across this um, in this meme, I would call it online, about how the life in Kubernetes can make you go bold because of some of the challenges you're going to face in managing your clusters, basically, the deployment, the scaling, handling outages, performance tuning, monitoring, troubleshooting, and basically just keeping track of your resources and its um, statuses. Lens was one tool that really helped me in navigating all of these challenges. What is Lens, basically? Lens is an open source Kubernetes IDE. And that's, an IDE is an integrated development environment, and it provided a comprehensive graphical interface for managing, developing, and troubleshooting my Kubernetes applications. So with Lens, I've been able to manage multiple clusters just on one dashboard. It's aimed to simplify managing Kubernetes. Um, so we're going to be moving on to the key features of Lens. So one of the major key features for me, for Lens, is that it helped me to, it gave me like a dashboard, one dashboard that I can use to visualize all my workloads. I can get real-time insights for my applications, my cluster health, logs and metrics all in real time. I can also use it to edit my resource, my Kubernetes resources, my YAML files. I can make deployment directly in the Lens IDE. I can, it also has a built-in terminal, right, where you can execute your commands and you're sure that you're calling the right endpoint, unlike when you're maybe doing it on BS code and you have to switch context all the time. In, in, in the midst of doing that, you can end up making errors, maybe calling the wrong context, and that, that won't be nice for anybody, right? So I'm just going to take a straight short demo on how I use Lens my everyday job as a Kubernetes user and how it has helped boost my productivity. Okay, so this is our home page of Lens and here we can see my tech talk right here that we're currently having. Okay, so first things first, you come to the catalog page to be to be sure of what clusters we have in here. So for for my own 
side, I have um, three clusters running here. Okay, two actually, one is still connecting. But if you'd like to add the cluster to Lens, Lens automatically detects the clusters running on your machine. But if you want to have one um, added manually, you can just come here and add your QB config file. You can copy and paste the configuration there and add cluster, and it automatically things here. So even if you have your clusters on cloud or on-prem, you can manage all of that with Lens. So um, you can go in, let me go into one of the clusters to show you how I um, visualize my cluster with Lens. So I am currently in one of my clusters and immediately we can see uh, metrics for this particular cluster. So one thing I love about Lens is the fact that it has an inbuilt Prometheus extension that shows you your CPU usage, your memory, and basically everything that Prometheus will do for you. Normally you have that automatically with Lens. So I can automatically see that, okay, this is my current CPU usage, this is my current um, memory, and how many ports I have running here. So I can, to have a clearer picture of everything going on, I can just come here onto the overview page and I can see that I have 74 ports. I have um, 35 deployments. I have um, eight demon sets, four stateful sets, 129 replicas and my jobs and my current jobs here on this page. And this is for everything across all the main spaces on this cluster. So. If I want to check for a specific namespace, all I have to do is come here and I can navigate through the different namespaces to choose which namespace I want to query. So yeah, let's um, try the cube system. So once I go into cube system, I can see that I have this one port here, three deployment, six daemon sets, and basically this is all we have for the cube system. And to go even further, if you want to see your port, right? For now, I can see that everything in this particular namespace is running fine. So you can go into your port and just have a look, an overview of your port. You can see that, okay, this particular port was created nine days ago. These are the labels, the controller, you know, and basically all the details. You can even shell into the port with this feature, you can see your logs. So once I click on this, I can see my logs and this helps for easy troubleshooting and debugging of my application. So we have all of that going on for us with Lens. Lens has made it very seamless to be able to do that. So say I want to, let's say, scale my applications. If I want to scale my applications my, or my deployment, I can easily just come here to this particular deployment. I can click here and once I click on scale, I can scale it to however, you know, as much as I want, and I click scale, and it automatically scales my deployment. I can start my deployment, or I can also view logs of this deployment. So I can also see more details of my deployment metrics, my CPU, my memory, you know, the file system, networking, everything regarding this. Um, deployment, I can scale it, I can restart it. So basically everything that we did with the I showed you previously. So this is what I have here. I can see that it was created 15 days ago and the annotations and the labels that are attached to it and of the new space. So it helps me to just have an overview and insight of my applications with one dashboard. So this is basically it for this system. So back to all of our new species, we can see that everything seems to be running fine. So one beautiful feature that I love about Lens is the fact that you can, you don't have to, you know, change context all the time when you want to change, you want to move between different clusters or you want to run a command or you want to just do something on your terminal, right? And you want to be certain that you are on the right they are calling the right endpoint, cluster endpoint. So Lens has an inbuilt terminal. When you click on this cross icon here, you can see the terminal session. So you can come here and you can make your kubectl. You can run your kubectl command, and we are certain that you are in the right context. 
right? So also, if you want to create a new resource, if you want to create a new deployment, you don't have to pack your head thinking of how to write your manifest files, right? So you can easily just come here and um, you select a template. So say I want to create a config map, right? I have this template that I can just edit and create my config map right here on lens, close and create, right? If I want to create a deployment, same thing, I click on this deployment template and here I can see that I have an Nginx deployment. So with this, I can easily deploy Nginx and for example, maybe I want a different version. I just come here and change the version or, or you want to redirect it to a different port. You can add your target port here. You know, you can edit the file and just customize it to what you need, right? You come here, create clues and Lens automatically builds that for you. So those are two features I particularly love about this Lens IDE and it has made managing Kubernetes so much easier for me. It has saved me lots, a ton of time and it has made me to be more productive and and my my issue resolution has the time for issue resolution has been reduced drastically since I started using Lens. Also, I can easily switch between the different clusters. But before that, I'd like to show you the different features that you have access to with Lens. I you can see this, you know you have access to your storage, to namespaces, to events, to Helm. So there are so many things that you can do with Lens. You don't have to keep running commands endlessly every time you want to get something quickly from your cluster. So now let's um, go to another cluster. So this is another cluster I have on this same machine. And when we go to the overview page, I can see that, okay, here I have 90, 97 ports. I have 69 deployments, 6 demon sets, 3 stateful sets, 4 37 replica sets, all deployed on this cluster across different same species. And I can, on one side, see that I have some pending issues. So just by just from this overview page, I can see that I have some things I need to check up on, right? So to even narrow it down further, you can just come, click on it, and once you scroll through, you can see the applications you have issues with. So with these, I can see that this is the error I have here. And to quickly debug it, I can just access the logs, click on it, and I have access to the logs here. And automatically, I can see my logs. I can easily detect what the problem is. If it's something I have to fix myself, I go ahead and fix it. If it's something that I have to call the um, developer attention to, I can easily do that. So yeah, Lens has provided that um, easy access for us to be able to manage and troubleshoot our applications seamlessly without running complex QCT commands or, or making errors in terms of deployment. Say I want to make a deployment to one cluster and if I'm trying to do that on the terminal, right, you have to ensure to switch context from your current context to the context you want to, you want to deploy to. And in the process of doing all of that, you may make some errors unknowingly and you just find that lens, whenever you're in a specific cluster, who are in that cluster, you know that there's no, they're calling that specific endpoint, right? They're not worried about um, pushing something to a different environment. So here, again, this is an overview of everything I have on this cluster. If I want to see, if I want to see the different namespaces, the resources I have on the different namespaces, I can easily just click on namespace and I can see that, okay, on my QB system namespace, I have these resources. Running, I have um, some issues that I need to attend to. Same way, um, let's speak on the different. Okay, if I come to this, I can see that I have these resources running and okay, everything seems fine. If I come to another um, namespace, I can see that okay, everything seems fine here as well. So basically, Lens just gives us that one dashboard to manage our Kubernetes cluster. It helps you realize everything going on in your cluster, it helps you to manage your deployment easily, it helps you to troubleshoot and debug your applications without um, wasting so much time. And with that, it makes you more productive at your job, right? So this is how I've been able to boost my productivity. 
So I hope that I've been able to show one or two people how Lens has helped me and my day-to-day -day job with resolving or debugging um, my Kubernetes cluster with ease. Okay, I, I have just a question myself. Um, I guess you tried other Kubernetes ID before Lens. You say that Lens is helping you be more productive. Do you have an ID by how much? Hmm. Okay, so before I started using Lens, I only used to access my cluster through maybe using VS Code and just running commands, basically. I never really used an ID that was dedicated to Kubernetes, right? So it was strictly just running commands and running kubectl commands and switching context at every point in time, right? So getting to learn about Lens, it made, it made my life easier. I remember there was a time I even tweeted about how I'm managing a few clusters with Lens and I feel like I'm cutting corners because I don't have to, to run multiple commands every day to get what I need for my clusters. So, well, I've not exactly used another IDE before Lens. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. It does. And we have two more questions that popped up from our viewers. Uh, Edward is asking, what's the difference between the free and paid version? Did you try both? OK, so currently, all of these features like demoed is on the free version. I've not even tried the paid version, so I'm not sure what I'm missing yet. But with the free version, I get to do all of this. And uh, the second question is from John Paul, who is asking, how does Lens handle access and permissions for team roles? OK, so um, there's the role-based access control on Lens. And there's also something called Lens Spaces, where you can create a space for those people you want to give permission to the Lens dashboard. So I, I think include that in my demo, unfortunately, but yes, there's that feature where you can give access to people, to developers you want to give access to without necess necessarily sharing your QB config files with them. If we are creating the Kubernetes deployment from the lens, doesn't it be a security concern? If someone has your K8 config file or your cluster, people can create deployments in, your, in our cluster. Okay, so anyone that has access to your Kubernetes cluster can also get your deployment file, right? Because I can easily just run a command to get the deployment and map it, the output to a YAML file, and I'll gain access. So I believe that anyone who shouldn't have access to your, dash, to your cluster shouldn't have access in the first place. So putting in place security principles and um, least privilege access and just having role-based access for your clusters should, is very important. So anyone who shouldn't have access to the cluster shouldn't even be given access because you can always get the deployment files. You can always get whatever you need from the clusters by running commands. So I hope I've been able to convince one or two people to use Lens to manage their clusters from today. Thank you, everyone, for coming to my tech talk today. I really appreciate your presence, and I hope that going forward, you would use Lens to, to boost your productivity at work and resolve your issues faster. Thank you so much. God bless you.